Hello YouTube, this is Roberto Blake, and today in this Photoshop CC tutorial, I'm actually going to be showing you how to use the Camera Raw filter to enhance your images. I'm going to show you a really convenient workflow for this, and you can already see um, what the image looks like here that we're going to be working on. Now, above the original image, I actually have a layer that I've done as a smart object in Camera Raw, and I'm just going to toggle this on and off so you can see the difference. Uh, the image was really flat before I went to work on it using the camera raw filter settings. So I'm going to show you how I did that and I'm just going to go ahead and delete this so that we can dive right in and I can show you how to develop a great image that you can enhance from scratch just using the camera raw filter settings in Adobe. So we're going to duplicate our layer, convert it to a smart object and get started so that we can work non-destructively with the camera raw filter. Go ahead and select Filter, Camera Raw. And you're going to see our panel open up. Go ahead and make sure that you um, select both of these icons at the top so you can see whether your highlights are overexposed or anything else is underexposed in the image. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to correct uh, the exposure and the highlights so that nothing is overexposed. We're going to do that by sliding um, our sliders to the left where that's concerned to make some of these things darker. And where our darks and our shadows are concerned, we're going to actually slide those so that we can make them darker. And you can see the blue show up when we're under exposing too much. So you just want to go ahead and correct that. One of the other things we're going to do is we're going to actually increase some of these values just appropriately because what you want to do is you want to use this to create your contrast. We're going to create contrast, we're going to get our lights and darks right, we're going to cool the image down just a bit with the temperature, and then we're going to increase the clarity and vibrance and saturation so we can really make these images pop. Now you do this as needed on your um, photos, but ideally you should be trying to create a situation where you're bringing out the most of these colors and where you're getting these high contrast values so your image isn't flat anymore. You know, you want the skin tones to be nice and warm. You want, you know, your darker area and your blacks to show up and to be rich. You know, you want your highlights there, but you don't want them blown out and overexposed. So you want to correct your exposure and your highlights accordingly. And that's what we're doing in the, um, you know, first bit here. We're going to move on to the next item very shortly, but make sure that you are dealing with some of your um, vibrance to just, you know, kind of make this stuff pop a little better and your clarity to get it nice and crisp. Go down to your saturation, and that's really what's going to bring out the most color in your images is saturation. You can see that we can pull it back here to the left, and it washes out our image. It takes away from that color, but when we move it to the right, we get these wonderful, beautiful colors that pop. So just kind of keep that in mind and play with this as you need. The next panel over is the tone curve. And this is where we really get to uh, mess with our darks, our lights, our shadows, and our highlights, and really bring out more of the contrast in this image. And that's why it's called uh, the tone curve panel. So um, you can see on the uh, curve above how it's affecting it. And again, because we have our indicator selected, we can see whether we're over or under exposing things in the image. But this is a really great tool for just refining your contrast even more. And I really suggest that you use it. And we're going to zoom in here and you can just see how much richer um, this image is and how we're just bringing out more of the detail by doing this and really making the couple here stand off of the background. So I just think that's really important to take note of and it makes a real difference in just making your image a lot less flat. So again, adjust this as needed in your um, photograph. The next thing we're going to look at is details. We're going to go into the sharpening here. We're not going to overdo it. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening here because you don't want to add unnecessary grain and artifacting. If your image is going to be used on the web, you have a lot more liberty with this since people won't be able to really zoom in and um, see intricate details. But um, if you're doing print, you'll want to just kind of keep this in mind and try and avoid artifacting by not overdoing your sharpness and detail here. But again, this can really help improve your image. Next, we're going to look at HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and um, Luminance. Now, with this, we can actually 
um, manipulate individual color values within our photo. And in this case, I'm going to use it to really bring out the most of these blues and change them to what I think um, you know is just a better overall tonal value. And we can do that by manipulating um, the hue and saturation primarily. And you can even inadvertently kind of use this as a color replacement method, although in my other tutorial I've shown you a much better overall color replacement method. But this works fine for manipulating colors that are already clearly there in terms of um, just a little bit of a difference in the value of um, those individual colors, in this case the blues in the t-shirt, so that we can um, you know, get them to a place that we feel is a better look maybe. And you, know, you can see that we can take a lot of creative liberty here with this and really make a difference in how this picture comes out. So again, just do this as needed in your image and think of you know, what you feel was a creative way to utilize this and get the most out of your image. Uh, obviously you can pull back some of the color if you think it's overly saturated, overly pronounced, but you can also tone it up and make it pop a bit. So there is that aspect of it. And again, you have three different panels. You can do this. Hue controls the actual um, overall color in terms of what color it is, whereas the saturation will um, deal with how pronounced that color is, whether you want it to really pop or whether you want it to be a little more subdued. And then the luminance is going to be the brightness uh, within that. So again, you can just adjust these three as needed. So that's hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, and now we're just going to go ahead and we've made our changes. We're going to apply the camera raw filter here. doesn't take long. And look at that. It is a huge difference. This image is no longer nearly as flat as it was. We're just going to toggle off real quick here. And you'll be able to see what a huge difference that makes. I mean, literally, a uh, difference between night and day. It's a great shot. It's well composed, but now it's very vibrant. It pops. The details are crisper. The couple really stands off against that background, and it's just an overall nicer picture. But if we don't like it, we can always just go ahead and non destructively adjust some things in here. Like, you know, maybe these blues are feeling just a little too rich, and we can just adjust them by just manipulating these sliders. And we can just pull back some of this, you know, make them a little less saturated. Adjust them as needed. And do whatever we want with them. And that's the beauty of this and doing this as a smart object is you have the ability to do this non-destructively. You don't have to commit to these changes. Um, if you decide you want a different look or a client decides they want a different look, you have the ability to go right back in here and work on this and just make your changes as needed, apply the filter again, and boom. And again, it makes a huge difference in doing this workflow and preparing your images. If you're preparing images to be used in advertisement, I highly recommend taking the camera raw filter approach in Photoshop CC if you happen to have CC. If you're using CS6, go ahead and use the camera raw uh, capabilities in native camera raw separately and then bring those images into Photoshop. One of the things that I do recommend as far as getting Photoshop CC rather than CS6 is this particular feature because I think it makes a huge difference in time saving uh, workflow because if you're working in advertising you can apply camera raw filters to any of the objects that are making up your composition and you can just get a lot of work done a lot more quickly and get through your compositions um, a lot easier and unify the tonal values and the color values of the images that you're putting together in a very easy manner. So that's one of the advantages of Photoshop CC. I know technically it's a bigger investment because you're paying continual money, but if you're working in advertising, you probably have continual money coming in anyway and it probably at a higher overall pay level. So it might be worth the investment to go ahead and just have an easier way to work with the tool and to be able to produce um, what I feel might be superior results in terms of uh, the turnaround time. You can get something that's better and faster instead of having to say, well, I can get that result anyway with the old software and have to take you know, maybe twice as long to do it. You know, That's time you could be working on another project. But I digress because you know that's my feeling on CC versus CS6, and that's a whole nother video. But I just wanted to show you guys a really great camera raw uh, workflow in general and you can use this either in regular camera raw in the older versions of Photoshop or if you're using Photoshop CC 
You can use it in the camera raw filter non-destructively and really enhance your workflow and get superior images. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Photoshop tutorial. Um, graphic designer Roberto Blake. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like it if you like this video. Uh, leave comments and questions below, suggestions for your next video. Um, keep watching, keep subscribing, keep sharing. I know I still owe you guys um, a giveaway because I finally hit uh, 1,500 subscribers on this channel. Thank you again for that. And I'll be giving announcement details about my giveaway uh, here shortly. In the meantime, go ahead, keep liking and subscribing uh, because when I hit my next milestone of 2,000 subscribers on this channel, I'll be doing yet another giveaway. And one of them will most certainly be a Photoshop uh, PSD that you can deconstruct and use yourself. So stay tuned for that. All right. Thanks for watching.